Miss Loomer, how's it going? How are you? I'm doing very good. All right, let me get the spotlight going here. All right, there we go. We got you on the screen. Welcome back to the Kill Stream. Thanks for having me. How's it going? Uh, it's going great. I was just looking at the at the mailer you sent me. Uh, which, <laughs> uh, so you're first off, introduce yourself. You've been on here before, but just in case, let's do let's do it formally. Uh, introduce yourself to the audience in case they don't know who you are. Well, my name's Laura Lamer, <laughs> the most based Jew on the internet. <laughs> uh, no, I'm Laura Lamer. I'm America First Republican candidate. A lot of people know me because of my investigative journalism and my activism and uh, all of my lawsuits against the big tech social media uh, companies, which of course resulted in me being the most banned woman in the world. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm running for Congress again. Last time I was on, I... Uh, was talking about my last congressional race uh, down in Palm Beach, but I've since uh, switched districts and now I'm running in the 11th district in central Florida, which is a majority red Republican seat. And we're nine days away from the election. Very exciting. I'm primarying uh, Daniel Webster, who's a pro impeachment rhino who skipped the vote on the January 6th commission. And it uh, looks like I'm set to win. We're working hard to win. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, uh, about everything I've seen shows that you're on track to win. I think you've outraised the guy as well. Um, I guess, um, what do you credit your... Well, of course it's not over yet. Let's not spike the football or anything. Uh, but uh, what do you credit your you know, success so far to? Well, I work very hard, and we are running an America first ground game, right? So we're working very hard on the ground. Uh, obviously I don't have Facebook and Twitter to campaign, so I can't just run free ads on social media like every other candidate can in this country. And so we are knocking on doors. We're having events uh, last election season with all of the COVID lockdowns. Obviously it was really hard to get out and have events and I couldn't have any fundraisers or uh, go door to door um, uh, before the primary. Uh, but now that's changed of course. And there's just been tremendous success and obviously, I'm an election integrity candidate. Uh, I am not afraid to admit that the election was stolen. I know that the election was stolen because my own election was stolen down in Palm Beach County in 2020 with mail-in ballot fraud. And uh, my rhino opponent, uh, who represents one of the most pro-Trump Republican areas in the entire state of Florida, he doesn't believe that the election was stolen, right? He skipped the vote. He was the only Republican who skipped the vote on the January 6th commission. And now we have political prisoners in our country. I mean, for crying out loud, the January 6th commission was used to weaponize our DOJ and the FBI and our federal law enforcement agencies against Donald Trump. And they carried out a Gestapo hit force raid at Mar-a-Lago the other day. And so he's complicit in that. And the fact that he, you know, skipped the vote on the January 6th uh, commission, I blame him for the raid at Mar-a-Lago. Now, what's his excuse for missing the vote? I mean, all these rhinos, they all have excuses. Oh, I'm sure he's got one. I'm just curious because I can't really, I mean, I can't understand why you would miss that. It must be a doozy is, is the only reason I ask. Like, he, he doesn't have an excuse for the January 6th uh, commission. What his excuse was for the, for the uh, second impeachment of President Donald Trump was, oh, well, my wife was sick. Oh, and okay. then it was, oh, he was sick. So... The fact of the matter is, is that's sad and all if that's even true. I don't even believe it for one second. But if it is true, uh, the fact of the matter is it's not the Dan Webster show and it's not the Dan Webster wife show. So if you are sick or your family is sick, well, too bad. You know, you should have sent in a proxy for your vote because you basically just deplatformed all of your constituents. And uh, he could have given his vote to another Republican member of Congress so that he could have actually fought for President Donald Trump and said he was selfish. And I don't even buy for one second that he and his wife were sick because the reality is, is he made a press release in the Orlando Sentinel, which is the most left-leaning paper here in Central Florida, announcing his decision to skip the vote. So if it truly was a medical emergency, you, you're not going to issue a, a press release an entire week before announcing that, oh, I'm not going to go to D.C. to support President Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like BS, let's be honest. And and I'm glad you mentioned the proxy thing because I know about those, but that didn't even pop in my mind uh, at first. But that's a really common practice uh, that members of Congress do all the time, basically have somebody else vote for them, say, hey, they've got the I'm right to come. advocating for proxy all the time. Yeah. However, it exists for emergencies. Okay? Right, and yeah, don't so overuse it. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. When you don't show up to vote as a member of Congress, you are deplatforming your constituency. And so there's no excuse, right, when proxy voting exists for a member of Congress to skip a vote and essentially deplatform over 800,000 of their constituents who are relying on uh, their member of Congress to cast the vote. So think about how screwed up it is that this is the most pro-Trump Republican area in the entire state of Florida, a safe red Republican seat, but their own 
member of Congress didn't make their voices heard. So obviously the constituents here believe the election was stolen. They support President Trump. They believe that the January 6th commission is a witch hunt. They believe that the impeachments, both of them were witch hunts and their voices were not heard because their congressman was too much of a coward to show up and vote. Now, what is his stance on Trump these days? Uh, is he trying to hug Trump and act like he's a MAGA guy? Or what, what is he saying exactly? No, he, never, he doesn't even support Donald Trump. And so the other day he issued a statement about the raid on Mar-a-Lago and all right. he said was, it's troubling. Meanwhile, I'm calling for you know the FBI to be defunded. I'm calling for the IRS and the DOJ to be defunded. You know, I think we ought to round Merrick Garland up and he ought to be impeached. So that's the kind of strong response that people in this country are looking for right now. They want leadership. They want people who are aggressive, who are going to take the gloves off and actually fight back. Merrick Garland is a criminal, okay? He is trying to make white Christian conservatives or just white Trump supporters in this country the number one terrorist threat in America. He's already said it, right? When his DOJ said that the biggest terror threat in America are white Christian conservatives or white Trump supporters, okay? And meanwhile, you have just the other day, right? You have Muslims rushing on stage at uh, an event in New York City and stabbing Salman Rushdie in the neck, trying to kill him in the name of Islam. So, you know, Americans reject this warped fake news reality that that somehow white people are the biggest terror threat and that Donald Trump and his supporters are the biggest extremists, while the DOJ continues to say that they are going to uh, refuse to designate Antifa and Black Lives Matter as domestic terrorist organizations, right? Um, Obviously, I am running to the right of Congressman Daniel Webster. He's a Republican, but I'm running to the right. I'm not in the middle at all. I am running to the right of the current Republican incumbent. And it's working. We've out fundraised him. We're up in the polls. And when I win my election in nine days, I'm going to be the next member of Congress because whoever wins the polls. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I don't know if people understand or not, because, uh, you know, but according to all the information I've seen, and I'm sure you probably have internal polling and all that stuff, too, looks like you're headed for a pretty solid victory. Uh, <laughs> and then that's a that's like a solidly red district. Uh, so you're pretty much going to be a House member, <laughs> like a House elect member, uh, whatever. Uh, House elect, I guess it's the color, right? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you could probably start planning your uh, – your uh, term there from there. But uh, well, I guess, you know, on that note, what what will be your first uh, acts as you as you step into Congress, if you step into Congress? <laughs> well, you know, obviously I want to repeal Section 230 because we need to uh, hold big tech accountable for uh, the way that, you know, they're, they're, they have legal immunity right now to basically just interfere in our elections, to ban people, to silence people. And right now, five billionaires in Silicon Valley have more power than any elected official or any elected body or representative body in our entire country. And that's wrong. I mean, they stole the election. They funneled over $400 million from Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg into these drop boxes to steal our elections. And trust me when I say that as the most banned woman in the world who has already taken on Google, Facebook, Twitter, and Apple, my lawsuit went all the way to the Supreme Court last year, I am going to be their worst nightmare, <laughs> okay? I am going to be their worst nightmare, and I look forward, okay, to fighting back for all Americans who have had their voices silenced by the big tech tyrants. Those are the terrorists in our country, people like Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey. Those are the people who should be designated as terrorists by the year. I couldn't agree with you more, actually. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I was talking with somebody off air the other day, uh, and they were asking, will you be able, will they have to allow you back on these platforms when you become no, a con because last time I ran for Congress, right, what did Facebook say? Facebook said that they were creating the Loomer rule. And the Loomer rule, as I wrote about in my book, Loomer and How I Became the Most Banned Woman in the World, basically says that even if you win an election, if you've been previously banned, you can't have access to social media. So I will be the first truly deplatformed member of the United States Congress. But luckily I'm on Telegram, I'm on True Social, I'm on Gab, I'm on Getter. Um, they're going to have another meltdown with an, when another candidate who used Gab for campaigning, uh, you know, wins their election. Uh, but I don't, I'm not going to be back on Twitter and Facebook. I don't have a campaign Facebook. I don't have a campaign Twitter. I'm going to name, shame, and blame my colleagues in Congress for their role in enabling the big tech social media tyrants. And we need to be encouraging a mass exodus in the Republican Party off of Twitter and Facebook and onto sites like Gab and you know Telegram and Truth and I'm on Getter as well. You know, we need to be encouraging a mass exodus. This is what I tried to do with Parler uh, before uh, Parler was, of course, deplatformed. Uh, but um, you know, the problem and the reason why we don't have any 
uh, preservation of free speech and why no one in Congress is doing anything to take on big tech is because they're all little celebrities. <laughs> I call it the Congressional Celebrity Caucus. They all want to be little <laughs> celebrities on Twitter, and all they care about is their social media and their likes and their retweets. And even the people that claim <laughs> that they're you know supposedly fighting for free speech in Congress, they're still addicted to their Twitter accounts. And you can't really call yourself a free speech activist or say that you are fighting for free speech if you are addicted to Twitter and Facebook as a member of Congress, if you are taking campaign donations from Facebook or Twitter or anyone in big tech. And I'm looking forward as an investigative journalist to using my investigative skill set to uncover who in the Republican Party is taking money from big tech and, you know, publicly shame them into um, you know, disavowing and breaking up big tech once and for all. Also, I don't know if people, I mean, surely they should realize, but not being allowed on Facebook in particular, uh, but all the other social media platforms as an, as an, you know, a candidate running for office. I mean, to me, that should be criminal uh, because these are public squares. Uh, and in some cases, you know, that'd be like being banned from calling people on the, on the phone to, to promote oh. your candidacy, basically. Oh. Uh, why I was inspired to run for Congress in 2020 when you had me on the kill stream and then people laughed at me. Remember people I said, Oh, Laura Lehman, she's just running to get her Twitter account back. Meanwhile, we raised, what was it? $2.5 million that we raised last election season. I was endorsed by Trump. He voted for me. I won my primary. Okay. I won my general election until they stole it in the middle of the night with mail and ballot fraud. So, you know, I am going to win. And I always said that I was going to get the last laugh, right? So these people can laugh at me all they want, but I am going to win in nine days and I'm going to go to Congress and whether they like it or not, they are going to have to consider me their equal and they're going to work with me. Okay, there, there's no more ignoring can, Laura Loomer after nine days from now. How can you not like this? Because you're right. They were laughing. They were putting out all these articles and, oh, Loomer, she's running for Congress. Oh, yeah, whatever. We had you on. Of course, you were tenacious even then, but I remember some people in the audience. Oh, yeah, of course, whatever, you know. But I could tell how serious you were taking it, and now you're on the cusp of actually going to Congress. I mean, first off, what does that feel like just as, like, a personal uh, win, too? But it's not just about me. Sure, obviously, of course not. Obviously, I was inspired by what happened, right, with all the deplatforming and being banned everywhere. But the reality is, is that I'm fighting for every American who has had their voice stolen and robbed and silenced by big tech. Okay, I'm I am going to be the most America first candidate ever in the history of the United States Congress. And I would say that I'm going to be the first truly America first candidate when I am elected to Congress. Okay. Because I actually walk the walk as opposed to just talking the talk and I'm not th trying to throw shade on anybody, uh, but I am going to say that I have a pretty long resume of actually, you know, um, uh, you know, sacrificing a lot and putting my money where my mouth is. I've confronted uh, the biggest enemies of our movement. I've already confronted the rhinos. <laughs> they have pushed me out of all the movements. Okay, I am hated by the Republican and Democrat Party establishments, banned everywhere. Uh, I took on James Comey, banned from being able to own or possess a firearm. So I would love, right? I would love for any member of Congress who wants to say that they're more America first than I am <laughs> or any candidate in this country that wants to say that they're more America first than I am, right? Let's compare resumes. Let's let's compare who's actually made the most sacrifices when it comes to, uh, you know, taking the shots and being persecuted in their own country, being a political prisoner and dissident in their own country, and sacrificing it all to get to Washington to be a voice for people who are also being silenced. Now, let me show this mailer that uh, that you sent me. That was, that's from your uh, your opponent. Uh, uh, this is uh, Daniel Webster, U.S. Congress. Uh, I, I was trying to keep oh. it po polite. I know that they would, I don't want him to he's clip. Endorsed, but... He's endorsed by APAC. <laughs> yeah. Which is thing to me because, you know, obviously I'm Jewish, right? <laughs> Breaking news. I um, did hear and, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious to me that, that APAC is campaigning against me because – there's so many trolls online that love saying, oh, Lou Mer, she's Israel first. And, you know, they, they accuse me of all these things that are just obviously not true. And yet APAC is campaigning against me, just like all these Jewish organizations campaigned against me last election season when I was running in the most Jewish district in the entire country against a Jewish Democrat, calling them out for their communist policies as a Jewish Republican woman. So um, I, I just find it to be... Um, really funny uh that uh that they're uh, working against me but it's great because i don't want their endorsements anyway obviously uh but 
Um, that was probably one of the funniest things. That happened. It's right front and center there in the middle too. I see the uh, the APAC pack. What, what, you've also had uh, issues with the ADL, have you not? Have they not attacked you, if I recall correctly? Some of these yeah, other. They, called. <laughs> they actually called. <laughs> it's hilarious. They called for my ads last election season to be banned because I ran <laughs> this really funny ad. It was supposed to be satire, uh, where basically we used all these like Yiddish words. Uh, to make fun of the fact that ad was called Meshuga. <laughs> I saw it. We played it on the show, but yeah, go ahead. Describe it. It was, it was made to basically like make fun of the hypocrisy within the, the left wing Jewish community and how they align with people that want to kill them. And yet they accuse everybody who works against them as being anti Semites, but then they're aligning themselves with people who are actually trying to literally kill Jews. Right. And so the ADL issued a press release and they said that, that I was using Holocaust imagery and that I was an anti Semite and they called for my ads to be uh, banned, which was, you know, of course, that's what the ADL does, but you know. Nobody likes them anyway. By the way, you mentioned the Israel first thing. I, I know I always, you know, every time I have you on, I enjoy having you on the show, but there's a certain segment of the audience. Ralph, you're selling out. This is, uh, you know, the king, the queen Zionist here and Israel first. And, and you mentioned that. So uh, what would you say to those people uh, who, who say it's not worth supporting? Um, uh, people Lindbergh? more falsely say I'm like Mossad or... Yeah, uh, that I'm Israel first. Yeah, yeah, because I'm so Israel first that APAC is campaigning against me and donating to my non-Jewish opponents. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's just so absurd at this point in time. But I think I've proven myself. I don't really need to explain anything. Obviously, I support Israel. Doesn't mean that I'm Israel first. I'm an American citizen. I'm not a dual citizen. In fact, uh, one of the pieces of legislation that I want to create when I'm in Congress is I want to make it illegal for people who were not born in the United States of America to hold office here. Because I think that it's ridiculous that we have people like Ilhan Omar, born in Somalia, who of course has ties to Islamic terrorists, uh, has no loyalty to America, uh, serving on the Foreign Affairs Committee. And now we have people like Miss Mexico, <laughs> Mexico first Myra Flores, who's serving in Congress. And on her first week on the job, she's spoiled faster than a gallon of milk. I mean, she's already <laughs> voting for open borders and amnesty. And yet she doesn't even seem to be, she doesn't ever talk about how she's proud to be from America. It's like my home country of Mexico. <laughs> well, are you representing Mexico or are you representing <laughs> America, right? So, uh, I don't think that um, I don't think that it's appropriate for people who were not born in the United States of America to be holding federal elected office in this country. I don't think it's appropriate for people in our federal government to be um, having dual citizenship. You saw this with somebody like uh, Dr. Oz, for example, who won the Senate uh, primary in uh, what was it, Pennsylvania, and yet he refused to give up his Turkish citizenship. So why is that acceptable? I mean, why would we want, if he potentially wins, why would we want to have a United States senator that, that served in the Turkish army and is refusing to give up his Turkish citizenship? I couldn't agree with you more on all that. Uh, and I'll say just from my perspective, uh, of course we've had you on and we've had, you know, callers call in, you know, we've discussed disagreements here or there. Uh, but I don't really think we disagree on all that much, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe that one issue or a couple little things here or there. But, uh, you know, I think that uh, Nick kind of said it the other day uh, as well. You'll be the first one from mm. representing us kind of, uh, you know what I mean? Like from this this corner of the Internet knows the concerns uh, knows the the, well, the actually, deplatforming. I'm actually genuine too. Yeah, I believe. I know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Let's just say I'm not gonna get to Congress and then and then go on your shows or speak at your events and then casually disavow you and pretend like I have no idea who you are, <laughs> right? So, so I'm actually you know really genuine because I walk the walk and I've been doing this for years and you know this is I'm one of the original uh, you know MAGA. Uh, I, I'm not gonna call myself an e -celeb, right? But but Probably. I'm one of the original MAGA individuals, right? I worked with Project Veritas to get President Donald Trump elected in 2015 and 2016. Um, and uh, I've earned my stripes, right? I'm not just campaigning on the America First banner like it's some type of bumper sticker or some type of bumper sticker slogan. And you know, I'm not going to Washington, D.C. To, uh, to, to be famous, right? I already am famous. I've been famous for the last 10 years of my life. And, you know, it's not all, not all it's out, you know, made to be. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, but I, I'll say this. Um, also, you coming on the show tonight, uh, I was telling somebody this the other day. I mean, you know, there may be a few voters in your district watching this, but probably, you know, it's not really putting you over the top or whatever. Uh, I think that that's a big deal, just the willingness to to come on the kill stream uh, and to do other shows, Infowars, other stuff like that. I'm a free speech absolutist. Yeah. 
So not only am I coming on the kill stream, but I'm also going to be speaking at Amron, which is taking place right after my election. I am I'm what? scheduled to be a speaker. What really? You know, there's actually no, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to be speaking at Amron <laughs> in November. So I believe I'm scheduled to speak on November 18th, and I'm very excited. I'm a big fan of Jared Taylor. I love Jared Taylor very much. He's a brilliant man. Uh, and I've been speaking with Nick, and I'm looking forward to also speaking at AFPAC 4. So let's go, right? Well, I had no idea about Amarin, but uh, I know you were at the last AFPAC uh, as well. I've been to all of the AFPACs. Really? So I was at the first one. I think I, I know I saw you there, and the third one, the second one, I didn't hit. I was at the second one and the third one, and then the first one, obviously, they tried, like, doxing you yeah. guys. and. I, you know, there was so much confusion because you had to change the venue three times. And after the third time of trying to chase down the venue, I was just like, okay, whatever. But <laughs> yeah, no, I um, have been to the last two aspects and I'm going to be speaking at the fourth aspect. That's awesome. By the way, Cisco, are you still here? I am. Do you I have am. a question for Miss Limmer? Because uh, I'm going to get her out of here in like five or 10 minutes. I want to make sure you get your question in. I do. Good to see you again, Laura. Um, I know you, you kind of just alluded to some anti-white rhetoric, I think, coming from the Department of DOJ. Um, how deep does the anti-white agenda go, and what could you do in Congress to help combat that? Well, I think it's very deep, obviously. like They're tr not just trying to weaponize the DOJ, but obviously now they're talking about hiring more IRS agents, right? that are going to be required to use lethal force. And it's now been immersed into our armed services too. I mean, you have the generals, people like General Milley making uh, new recruits or army officials reading books about white guilt and how they need to be ashamed of their whiteness, right? And so when you are uh, training the supposed most powerful army in the entire world <laughs> to hate white people, obviously you're, uh, you're, you're not only, um, you know, creating hostile race relations in the United States of America, but you're also weakening your national security because obviously we are a majority white country. And if you're teaching people to hate majority of the people in your country and you're teaching your military to hate and resent majority of the people in the country, what's going to make these people want to actually protect the people of this country uh, if we if we go to war with a hostile foreign nation? And so I, I'm very concerned with it because um, – it's, it's, it's making other people um, and other foreign ho hostile nations around the world realize that our military and our national security advisors hate us just because of the color of our skin. And if somebody hates themselves, obviously the enemy is going to pry on that as a weakness that they're going to use and they're going to weaponize uh, to... Uh, you know, spew more propaganda or to uh, eventually take over a country. And I think that that's exactly what the Chinese are doing. Uh, that's exactly what Russia is doing right now. Uh, and you have um, countries around the world that are just openly mocking, right? Mocking the fact that we have a military teaching, uh, teaching uh, army officials to hate themselves for being white and saying things like you can, uh, I don't know, like, they're promoting all the transgenderism and they're saying that men can get pregnant. I mean, this is coming from the military. I, I, I was going to ask you about that. Well, like, I mean, I take it you're against this. Uh, is, we need to turn back the clock. Do we not on what's going on in the military? I don't know. I, when I, when I hear stuff like this, I I'm just appalled. You know what I mean? Like the, the <laughs> obviously I'm against it. And that's why when I'm in Congress too, another thing that I want to do is I want to create legislation to ban affirmative action. I think affirmative <laughs> action has been totally destructive to our country. <laughs> I mean, is there anything more toxic than affirmative action? Can we get that to actually valuing people who work hard and merit-based um, employment and merit-based education in this country? <laughs> By the way, you mentioned the IRS. I'm still just dumbfounded that the, I can't believe the Democrats passed a bill that doubled the size of the IRS during an election year. I, I just can't uh, wrap my head around the strategy there. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I, you know, I'm not uh, an all-time political strategist, but I, I wouldn't think that would be the play. But I don't know. Your thoughts on the, the IRS? Well, thing. Gee, gee, who would have thought that they were going to weaponize our federal law enforcement <laughs> agencies and raid Donald Trump the week that he was supposedly supposed to announce his 2024 presidential run? It's almost like we're living in some type of like Latin American dictatorship. <laughs> this is what they do in countries in Latin America before they just, you know, have a full-blown coup. Uh, but yeah, we live in a banana republic and this is what they're doing. I mean, I already saw this last, uh, this last week after the announcement, right, of uh, the 87,000 new IRS agents. Um, now they're targeting uh, some of the largest uh, Christian church networks uh, across America too. So they're already taking advantage of 
a weaponized IRS. They did this uh, during the Obama Biden administration where they targeted conservative nonprofits through Lois Lerner and the IRS. Uh, they targeted Tea Party activists. This is nothing new, right? We, we're, we're, we're living in a police state. Oh, wait, Cisco, did you have a follow up there? Uh, a little bit. It's a bit of a different, different, totally. Okay, different we'll thing. get it in real quick. Sure. Um, So Americans have been suffering from declining birth rates, especially native born Americans uh, with rates below replacement levels. Uh, What are some ways that you believe we could fix this without obviously just replacing ourselves with mass immigration? (laughs) Yeah, well, I I talk about this on the campaign trail a lot, the campaign trail, and I, I tell people that Replacement theory is not a theory. It's a fact. <laughs> and for anybody that doesn't want to accept that that fact or accept that truth, you just go look at the United States Census uh, uh, reports, and you see that every single year, Blacks, Hispanics, Asians continue to increase while white people, right, the population of whites in this country is decreasing. And so when you look at mass migration, obviously I'm an immigration moratorium candidate. I'm in favor of mass deportations. I am in favor of an immigration moratorium. My rhino opponent, Daniel Webster, attacked me in the paper and said that my immigration policy is extreme. (laughs) He said that it's extreme and unrealistic because he supports amnesty. But what I think is extreme and unrealistic is expecting taxpayers to foot the bill of nearly $600 billion a year to pay for the 40 million illegal, criminal, illegal alien invaders who are in our country. They need to go back to where they came from. (laughs) They, They all need to be sent back to where they came from. And so when you look at mass migration, people need to understand the Democrats aren't viewing this as a humanitarian policy like they claim, right? They say that it's humanitarian. It's an electoral strategy because they know that if they give 40 million illegal aliens the right to vote, we're never going to have another Republican elected in this country ever again. We're never going to have any nationalist populist movements. We're going to be speaking Spanish, okay, in the next in the next few years. And that's exactly why they tried to federalize our elections with the NASA bill. The NASA bill, of course, which is the bill where they tried to federalize the elections and give illegal aliens the right to vote. My opponent, Daniel Webster, skipped that vote. So why do we have these do-nothing rhinos who are allowing us to be replaced and who are allowing for criminal illegal alien invaders to uh, interfere in our elections and take over our country? All right, I got a couple more quick questions. I'll get you out of here. First off, are you confident in the count as far as uh, you know the elections go, uh, not just in the midterms, but uh, in the upcoming presidential election in 2024? <laughs> No, honestly, not, not, you know, here in Florida, Governor DeSantis has banned Zuckerbucks, uh, but the reality is, is that Dominion machines still exist, okay? Uh, you still, um, you still have, um, you know, illegal aliens coming into our country in states like New York and California trying to create legislation uh, to give illegal aliens the right to vote. In Arizona, of course, the Biden administration is now suing the state of Arizona uh, because of their proof of citizenship law uh, for voting, <laughs> so... How are we supposed to have any faith in our elections and the count when the Republican Party as a whole is too cowardly to admit that the election was stolen? Okay, we are not going to fix our elections in 2022 or 2024. The Republican Party continues to deny the fact that the election was stolen. They have yet to issue a statement admitting that the election was stolen. They refuse to acknowledge the legitimacy of the surveillance footage in 2000 meals. Okay. These people are part of the problem. And I tell people that it's the, the Republican party were they were also in on the steal. Uh, they helped the Democrats steal the election from president Donald Trump, because it's pretty obvious that the RNC and the crooked uh, Republican party establishment doesn't want Donald Trump in 2024. Uh, they're trying to position other people to run. Uh, they are silent right on the FBI being weaponized to take him down because they stole an election from us in 2020 and now that the people are awake and aware of voter fraud they're trying to steal our president right they're trying to steal our desired candidate from us in 2024 one last question now this is a bit of a comedy one i saw in the the papers the the papers the the news the other day uh i talk like i'm in 1970 uh the news the other day uh where they said you converted to christianity uh and i was i didn't know you didn't by the way but i just uh any thoughts on that when you saw that going around was that news to you and uh yeah no i I didn't convert (laughs) obviously i'm a really big supporter of the christian nationalist movement I support Christians. Uh, I'm going to fight for Christians. I'm going to fight for white people. I'm going to fight for, you know, nationalist movements. I'm going to fight against the uh, the anti-white racism that is being, uh, you know, perpetuated. I'm going to fight for all Americans, really. All freedom-loving Americans, um, regardless of their background. But there is clearly a war on white people. There's clearly a war on Christianity in this country. 
obviously there's a war on right-wing Jews like myself, because you can see that not only have I been totally disavowed by the left-wing Jews, but even the so-called right-wing Jewish organizations and groups like APAC, which claim to be nonpartisan, are campaigning against me. Um, so, so being Jewish hasn't exactly saved me from being a political dissident in my country. Uh, but um, you know, even though I am Jewish, I'm still going to fight for Christian nationalists. And I, I find that most of my friends and most of my allies and most of the people who I associate these days uh, with our Christian nationalists, um, evangelical Christians, and um, right-wing Jews like myself who, um, you know, are, are, are waking up to uh, the problem in our own community, right? Miss Laura Loomer, I appreciate you coming on the kill stream tonight. I'm very excited for you and proud of you. I think you, uh, I think you're on the right track and you're about to be coordinated here. Uh, and so, yeah, go, uh, go ahead. You want to say something at the end? Yeah, I was going to say that if people want to support my campaign in these next nine days, they can go to Laura Loomer for congress.com. Um, if you live in Orange County, Lake County, Polk County, or Sumter County here in Florida's 11th district, please get out and vote. Early voting has already begun. Um, and then election day, the Florida Republican primary is August 23rd. But this is boots on the ground. If you know anybody who lives in these areas, let them know. Right. Vote for Lumen for Congress because we're going to make history. We're going to make history. And what are they going to do to me when I get to Congress? What are they going to do? Ban me? Silence me? Deplatform me? Take away my guns? Shut my bank account down? They've already done this to me. There's literally nothing they can do to me because if you don't make me, you can't break me. But guess what? I can break you. And I'm going to. Laura Lumer, thank you so much. Please come back uh, after you get that W. And definitely, if anybody's listening, don't rest on the laurels now. Uh, keep pushing for Miss Loomer, uh, and I look forward to having you back on. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Yep, appreciate you. Laura Loomer, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.